We choose, as Minnesotans, to provide our children with every opportunity, every advantage, every everything to pursue their dreams. Yet, when it comes to education, the very foundation of a brighter tomorrow, some politicians want to give tax cuts to the richest 1% and big corporations instead of asking them to pay their fair share. That leaves our schools, year after year, with no choice but to cut more and more critical student programs and services. Minnesota's system of school finance is complicated, consisting of multiple aid and levy sources. But for the purposes of showing what two decades of underfunding looks like, let's focus on two of the most telling sources and their impact on revenue, the state and the local share of per-pupil funding. Three Red Pines, which we all learned in school as the Minnesota State Tree, have generously volunteered to illustrate our story. The one on the right represents the state's share of funding, while the one on the left is the local share. The Red Pine in the middle stands for Minnesota's public school revenue, combined state and local aid. Now, while all three trees start at about the same height, that starts to change in 2003. And by the way, we're talking real dollars here. That is, though funding may indeed increase, if it doesn't keep pace with inflation, those same dollars buy much less. Which is exactly what you see happening with state aid. Meanwhile, local aid, in a desperate effort to make ends meet, starts to rise. Revenue, because some of our school districts have a limited tax base to draw from, starts to drop as well. By 2012, per-pupil state aid, again in those real dollars, falls by $2,000, an all-time low. In that same period, aid from local levies increased, on average by $1,000, but it's not nearly enough to make up for the shortfall. So, Main Street taxpayers have had to pay more to keep their schools afloat because the big corporations won't pay their share. The result is an average revenue drop of $1,000 per student, sometimes much more depending on where you live, which causes school boards in many parts of the state to make some difficult decisions. Complicating their math even further is lawmakers mandating that they add programs without the funds to pay for them. For instance, Minnesota's 2011 Teacher Development and Evaluation Law touted as a way to improve educational outcomes, remains unfunded. School boards, as a result, have no choice but to swing the budget acts. Curriculums narrow, class sizes increase, student to counselor ratios soar, after school activities disappear, disparities grow. Fast forward a couple of years to 2016, and you'll see a sudden rise in state funding, and, as a result, revenue. Lawmakers, who had frozen state aid for eight straight years, called the move historic. Truth was, that increase in real dollars only brought the state's contribution halfway back to its 2003 funding level. Schools were still left short. Even worse, just two years later, the downward spiral started again. Local funding, as you can see, is doing all it can to make up for the shortfall. Trouble is, the tax base varies wildly from district to district, creating a system of haves and have-nots based on your zip code. Educators, asked to do more and more with less and less each year, start to leave the profession in droves. Today, one in three of our new teachers, a large number of them frustrated by a lack of resources, change careers in the first five years. And close to half of our licensed teachers are no longer in the classroom. 2021 will be another turning point for education funding. Some politicians will try to use COVID-19 as an excuse to push for even more tax cuts. They'll argue that all students lost ground when schools closed. But the truth is, the outbreak has only made Minnesota's racial and social opportunity gaps even worse. If we're to move on and improve from the crises of 2020 and truly make our schools racially and socially just, we need to get serious about making sure every child can pursue their dreams regardless of what they look like or where they're from. We need to get serious about doing what works. 
Real learning can't happen when kids arrive hungry or are stressed out about issues at home or in their communities. So let's make sure those who need it have healthy meals, support, and trusted counselors. Teachers can't give individual attention in packed classrooms, so let's fund schools so small class sizes foster stronger relationships. Our schools can't do any of this unless the richest 1% and the big corporations start paying their fair share. So let's make public schools a top priority and fully fund our public schools so they have the resources they need to deliver the education our children deserve. Believe in we, Minnesota, joining together to fully prepare our students. Believe in we, Minnesota, electing lawmakers who will put students first. Believe in we, Minnesota, investing in a brighter tomorrow for all of us.